Okay. Uh, no, there. Uh, there is no one there. So. Um, oh. Yeah. So right. which means that it's just you and me at the moment. That's fine. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'll send. Yeah, and we can have a, a quick discussion so as to your plans uh, going for the next uh, in this semester and what you plan to do and how we want to get things. Absolutely. The other thing is to, uh, I'm wondering whether, you know, uh, the meeting, oh, someone just joined. Alan's yes, joining. Yes, Alan's oh. joined. Okay. Yes. So maybe go over last, this morning's meeting, what they talked about. I think it would be great to also get a sense about what they were planning yes. to do and how we can attach a larger ship also to, to move those forward. Yes, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll attach the text um, here. I'll share the text with you all. So... Let me um, send it over to the chat box, and here's my here's the thing. So it should show up on your chat box. Good day, Alan. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Hi there. Hi, Alan. Hey, Alan. Hi, Kendall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good day. Good day, Alan. How's it going? Oh, I'm really confused as to what's happening. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I think we had two meetings today. Uh, the first one was a couple hours uh, in the morning uh, today that uh, Siram organized. And this one is the second one of us, so where we can do it from Australia, whoever can join us. So Kendall is joining us from Canada. Whereabouts mm -hmm. are you? Are you uh, Kendall, you're in Vancouver. Yeah, still Vancouver. Landlocked uh, by uh, COVID. Yes, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just shared with you the um, on the chat box the um, the the meeting link that happened this morning, uh, our morning time, of course. Um, what I reckon seven hours earlier. You can get a sense of what they were discussing there. And um, so they said that they were best. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Um, I can, I can, I can send it. Um, can you bring up the chat box? Yeah, got it. Okay. So I'll see if I can get, get the line numbers. Um, So just starts, um, it says um, meeting led by Suram July 5th, 4 p.m. Yep. UTC, yep. Yeah, see that, yeah, in the discussion, the, the bullets there. Mm -hmm. So they have, um, oh, maybe I can share the screen and so we can get some discussion points there. Perfect. Yeah, so they are, um, they discussed kind of follow up to the COVID response that we had had and the guideline standards. I believe that was one of the main things, themes that were to come out uh, in both groups. Um, I don't know what they were meaning by bring your own device. Yeah. ISO 1331 implementation, which is many for what the group, I don't know what they, were, what, what they meant to say that. Do you get a sense that they are um, looking at uh, a, a bunch of papers? Um, do you get a sense they want to unify uh, behind one topic uh, to advance this? Uh, do you get a sense about that, um, what they want to do? I, I think um, one of the um, topics that we've been discussing here um, for a fair bit is the um, is the development of the guidelines and the standards, isn't it? So that might be one of the themes that may emerge out of these discussions. Uh, but of course, there are other things that we can certainly, I mean, depending on who's working on what themes, we certainly can have more than one themes to, um, 
to, to start mm. with apply with, is my reading. And with the guidelines and standards today, is there a documents or is there a certain outlet where they want to get those published or? Yes, there was some discussions that either, either we could um, we could put up a put up a website where we can uh, post those guidelines and that kind of stuff. Or one of the other thoughts was that that when the call for um, 2022 uh, yearbook publication comes out, this could be one of the themes that we could uh, post as our uh, as our contribution towards that. Mm. Uh, but I'm not sure if there are any other things or other thoughts that they have been thinking about. Uh, and I know that they have, uh, they've just published the um, ISO 1331 uh, documentation. Uh, wasn't there a link that was shared in the, in the EMEA discussion group? Um, I'll, I'll if I can see if I can bring that up. Uh, sorry, I mean, yeah, there was that, uh, there was a document that was shared in the EMEA discussion group. Uh, mm. Yeah. And uh, they were also talking about the med info, which is going to be a different format this year because I think um, um, yeah. So are you planning to attend the med info um, conference this year? Is that a virtual conference? Um, let me find it out. I think it's in a... Um... Yeah, it would be a virtual conference, Met info. Yeah. That's what I sense. It's going to be a virtual conference. Um, well, where is it? Oh, it's online. So they haven't really uh, specified that. It's entirely online, which means that it can be anywhere. Uh, yeah. Coming to a computer near you, I suppose. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, when's the um, date for? Um... Second to fourth, it looks like. October 2nd to fourth. Yeah, October 2nd. Uh, it would be interesting, though, to uh, find home. How would that be? What time zone of that October 2nd and 4th? I, I reckon that it's going to be all day, say between 9 and 5, but I don't know how that's. Um, so that's yeah. what they're saying that it's going to be all day, but what, that's all, what does that all day mean? Is yeah. going to be in whose time zone? Um, exactly. exactly. Because certainly, I mean, all day time zone. Uh, hmm. Internationally, they don't work. Yep. Yeah, it helps if they um, if they post some information about the time and things like that there. Yeah. You don't get to see that though. And will I'll, will there be? Have we decided our uh, EMEA group when we are meeting during Med Info or this year? No, no, I I don't think we had any discussion around that 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 uh, stage yet. But I think this is a good time that we could probably start um, um, start initiating that discussion so that if we can have more than one meeting over the next um, month or so, so that yeah. we know who's going and who's attending and you know what papers are being shared. Uh, that'd be really useful. And what what are people thinking? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that'd be really useful. Um, let me see if I can find a website to see what they've got. There's a, a more information. Now it just we're just switching around the same yeah. same things over and over again. Are you both registered and speaking at the conference, or? Um, I have not, but I think we have to go and do our presentation of the group uh, report. Mm. 
So I'll probably have to register at some point. I'll probably do that uh, this week sometimes and get it done. Um, yeah, because the registration is free. So How are you, so Alan? Well, I've not yet registered. Uh, Wouta from Portland's, uh, Wouta Mayer has written a draft paper, which I've seen. It needs a fair amount of work still if it's accepted. Um, okay. I would contribute towards that. And that is on the topic of um, the broad topic of guidelines and unif trying to unify or relate uh, uh, a, a range of initially international guidelines in, in this space. Okay. Relevant to um, remote healthcare. Because as you all probably know, I was the project lead for. IS 131, mm -hmm. which has been published. Yeah. So I'm interested in developing further work around guidelines, um, particularly developing ways in which my methods, documents, information guidelines that will help people um, use and choose different guidelines so you know, perhaps work around a, a repository or access to different guidelines from different countries and different organizations is something that could be of value if it could be organized and actually maintained and also um, there is a need to um, make the make the path through guidelines um, a little clearer, which could lead to, if you like, development of more guidelines because mm. we have, we have a raft of national guidelines. We have a mm. raft of national guidelines. We have guidelines on on um, medical devices. We have guidelines coming in on labeling of um, applications to use um, in, um, in health services, apps in other words. And um, uh, these guidelines all tend to be developed in isolation. Yeah. So, uh, and these you mean international and national guidelines. And even within the national guidelines, there may be variations in the adoptions of those guidelines across the country as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Terminology. I mean, like Canada has got a guideline on virtual healthcare. Mm -hmm. I hate the term virtual healthcare myself. But, um, you know, it's, it's, an okay, it's okay as a guideline. Um, it also looks like if I need if I want to access a full guideline, I have to pay $169. Is that, is that? Uh, well, this, this drives me crazy because yes, you do have to. Oh, well. The business model of the International Standards Organization yeah. is people pay. Um, mm -hmm. um, we haven't been able to crack that one open. Sorry. But I can't. Although I was the project lead, I would be skinned alive if I was to send you a copy. No, I oh, yeah, no. yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So, so that would mean that in other parts of the world where they, um, I mean, well, what I mean by is this that uh, it, it it makes it out of reach for a section of people who might be able to use it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So one way around that might be to produce independently, produce, if you like, an implementation document mm -hmm. to guidelines, which mm -hmm. is not just some of the ISO standards, but links to them in a way which doesn't involve infringement of copyright. Right. Um, 
but also it is a widely accessible. So if people need to drill into a particular standard on medical devices or quality control or whatever, then they can go and do that. But they have, if you like, some, uh, they do have something which they can begin to, uh, begin to apply. So, so I understand that the ministries might be able to purchase these copies and make it available to the practitioners. Yes. And that's fine. And then uh, what, um, what I reckon that you're suggesting is that we do a derivative work on those guidelines to say some implementation notes that people can use further to suit their own country standards. Is that something... Uh, that's a possibility. Say. That's a possibility. I see. And which also takes account of um, other standards in the area, whether they be national or international. Mm -hmm. Like tries to collect best practice, um, you know, particularly in the, area, in the area of medical devices and apps, um, because there's a. Certainly, out of Europe, there's this thing called eighty two three hundred four dash two, yep, which is a a draft technical specification at the moment about um, ha, uh, processes, uh, how you would label or describe um, applications used by anyone, including mm -hmm. consumers, and give them a green label or first class label or second yeah. class label, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Um, lots of problems with that standard or that specification at the moment, in my view, but it's going ahead anyway. Um, and the whole point about that is that that's developed in isolation. So the, the, the rationale is that if people think, if people are told that's a green standard and that's good for your health, then they'll use it. But the point is that it's not the app which improves healthcare, it's use of an app. Right. Device that mm. improves healthcare. Mm. And that mm. involves support and guidance from a medical professional often, mm -hmm. or someone similar, mm -hmm. and then becomes a service which relates to telehealth service, which is described in ISO 13131. But at the moment, those two areas of work, we're just not talking to each other. No, right. And the other thing which, is a, which, which we are finding in New Zealand, the last mile connectivity problem is this, that quite often patients really do not have the devices. And that seems seem to be a barrier in implementation of telehealth telemedicine services that either um, it was just a part of a work that we had done um, the last year during telehealth delivery services during COVID lockdown, that while the, um, the practitioners were willing, some practitioners were willing to use and uh, were quite adept at using the devices Patients were not uh, ready to um, latch into that because they didn't really have the devices, particularly in underserved areas. And then there was a strong backlash from the midwife community because they felt that they needed really face-to-face um, -face or person-to-person -person interaction that was never fostered by telehealth, telemedicine, and that kind of situation. So. I think the landscape is quite complex in terms of, yes, we have the standards, we have the guidelines, we have the evidence base that's slowly accruing and we're we are doing this, but what it means in terms of real world connectivity yeah. in reaching the last mile to reach the people who need to be served at some point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A lot will depend on speciality as well. Obviously. Yes. Okay, so you know, in say diabetic care, you know, there is a <coughs> cohort of patients with that condition that do use some sort of a device mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessarily integrated into anything. And probably in New Zealand and Canada, 
use of some sort of device has probably increased in increased during COVID because patients don't get to see their doctor. That's right. Yeah. There's also, you know, the it was interesting in discussing with uh, Health Canada, you know, the, the kind of FDA equivalent in Health Canada group. Uh, the problem with those individual devices or even regulating the service software as a service or AI ML is the fact that, you know, how do you, how do you ensure safety and also how do you uh, support or not people who hack the software to adapt yeah. to the uh, uh, For example, a lot of young people uh, hack a app so that yeah. they can adapt their own data to improve care, right? Uh, so as a government, how do you either support that or to say, you know, once you, once you hack, it's no longer the product that I've now regulated, right? And so, and so what's the risk, et cetera. So, so a lot of uh, really interesting discussion uh, about those. I guess what I'm struggling with now is, uh, you know, Alan, as you said, you know, there are a lot of standards out there, uh, but, you know, uh, how do you apply that in practice? And more importantly, what can we as EMEA, as a group, can contribute? Are there certain aspects of this that we can contribute that really increase the insights or uh, without replicating stuff mm. that's already there? Uh, I'm, just, I, I'm struggling with that in my mind right now. No, I think it's, it's a very, very important point. Right now at the moment, uh, in New Zealand, we are grappling with a very strange situation. There have been a... Um, an entire hospital system, uh, the Waikato, um, you know, district health board uh, hospital systems are taken down by allegedly hackers from Russia that have then yeah. obtained patient data and they have released them in the dark web. And uh, at the time, and then when we are discussing this, there have been procedures that have been on hold. People just don't know what they're doing. I mean, it's a, it's a big problem and they're ex extending that information security issue as to what happens when something like that happens also definitely needs to be considered. This is not something that had happened in the previous years, but this is the one that we are seeing here. Yeah. So is that something that comes under the um, uh, 13131 or other specifications in terms of how do you deal with such eventualities in terms of information integrity? Well, there's quite a lot about information quality in 13131, but it's not really orientated towards dealing with the um, consequences of that sort of uh, hacking ransom mm -hmm. activity. Um, uh, and whether or not that should be dealt with from the perspective of an organisation that's been hacked or uh, someone who's uh, patient or personal information has been hacked. Um, don't know, again, again, it's an area of it, of work that could be developed. I, I would like to see it developed in a, in a usable form that, or aspects of it in a usable form um, that can be understood and applied by ordinary people rather than it being developed in an information security silo where you'll get the... Yeah, yeah. Let's lock it down with triple factor authentication and uh, mm -hmm. that's a, that sort of approach, which really is, is the death knell for business. Once you make yeah. that too difficult to use. Yes. Um, Alan, I wonder if I can ask for some insights, and uh, Aaron Dam, I also welcome your thoughts about this. You know, uh, of course, the there are certain things that need kind of uh, organizational um, uh, amalgamation or, you know, sometimes a, a bit of a, a, a hierarchical structure for top, uh, top down. So I wonder if the ISO uh, guideline may be one of those that is very good in trying to organize and, and, and put it into perspective. But I also imagine there's a bit of a bottom up type of uh, strategies and activities. For example, what do health providers need to know about 
or health consumers need to know about mm. Mm. data to use it well, mm. etc. Mm. I so uh, address that piece about bottom up and. Uh, and uh, again, just thinking about EMEA as our group, can we in some ways occupy that kind of grassroots because we do have representation across uh, the country. Uh, I contribute something from that point of view. Welcome some thoughts about that. Uh, uh, you, you had a good point there, Kendall, because um, um, although there is quite a bit in 13131, which is useful or refers to if you like consumer use, for want of a better word, it's basically a standard for organizations, mm. not, not for consumers. Right. Why Wuta, for instance, is wanting to write his paper for MedInfo, because he wants to bring in a more of a, a product life cycle view which includes the consumer mm -hmm. um, so I think you're right there is a niche niche there which could be built up um, for consumers which could prevent provide like a more visible a more human uh, yeah. touch to this whole area and very pragmatic too because you really need that kind of buy-in and standardization that then a next step might be to um, make it uh, to reach out to the consumers and to the um, to people who are delivering care mm -hmm. um, so so that becomes um, a de facto standard of operation and standard operating procedures that will be beneficial and that can connect exactly as you were saying, Alan, that there at the moment there is a um, there's a disjoint between what's in the standards and how that's that gets done when the rubber hits the road, isn't it? Yes. Yes, there is, there is a disjoint. Um, I, I, I think it's a really interesting idea to build something from the uh, user up mm -hmm. rather than organization down. Uh, but I, I can't quite conceive of how, uh, what it would look like. So I think it would be useful to have a lot more discussion on that. Yes, yes. And possibly some kind of a, you know, some some sort of brainstorming sessions, uh, you know, sessions to see how people, what people are doing, and how they're collecting data at the coal face. Um, you know, I know that there have been projects that people have been conducting, at least in the in New Zealand context, where they're looking at how our um, um, how our health service providers and how our health and patients are uh, using this, the the telehealth services, particularly. Uh, since COVID, because um, although I mean I know that in our country we've um, we don't really have that much that much restrictions because we don't really have community transmissions anymore, so people are walking into uh, doctors' clinics. But there are other, other situations where people are connecting up using uh, you know Zoom or other other kinds of um, um, you know team viewers and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there and and there have been difference in how people um, utilize. So for example, mental health professionals use it in a slightly different way than say, for example, a, um, a, a primary care uh, provider will use it. So all of these contexts at some point will need to be um, need to be brought into that framework that we are thinking. And I think, as you said, Kendall, um, uh, EMEA, THWG could be a good, um, uh, space for those discussions, isn't it? What do you guys think? Yeah. I was also trying to reflect on the this morning's discussion. Uh, a, a couple of points in some ways is about, you know, user up, you know, the, the bring your own device, you know, bring your mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. eyes that there's a tumorism in uh, towards doing that. Or how do you uh, implement the guidelines? 
or um, you know how people has done it as the you know the 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 the, the seven bullet the sub bullet uh, of the different dimensions and how the people uh, put it into practice. So I wonder if this morning's group there may be a part of their discussion where this kind of grassroots look uh, might also be interesting to kind of uh, uh, come into confluence with what they're trying to talk about also. Yep. Mm -hmm. well, one aspect that uh, is just running through my head at the moment is that um, you know, the 13131 guidelines just a small part of them talk about identity, the need for a healthcare provider to identify the patient, be talking to the right patient. It, it also actually says, you know, the patient should be able to identify the healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. and yep. I mentioned that because I've been doing some work with Akram on um, piloting a uh, uh, training a training session on um, uh, doing telehealth on how rural doctors do telehealth use, particularly using phone and video conferencing. Yep. And we did some uh, simulations with about ten or eleven doctors, and oh, these, are, these are working doctors. Half of them forgot to identify the patient. Mm. Yeah. So they were like, and some of them, you know, quite a lot of them are pretty lousy communicators and go, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the screen, yeah. 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 So a lot of competencies, certainly on the part of healthcare providers, which are important when care is separated they're not yep when care is not separated you know um communication uh dynamics can be different absolutely absolutely um, but when it's separated some of those some of the deficiencies in communication can be exaggerated and the same goes for the same goes for patients. You know, <coughs> um, is it is it you know, what sort of environment should the pa patients seek to take their health consultation in? Is it mm -hmm. down the street, a lot of traffic noise, etc. Do you expect something? high quality in that case you probably wouldn't do that if you're having a serious business call um you know things like that so there's a whole um human human use yes if the language but i can't think of better words use by humans of technology mm. dimension mm. Mm. which we've got nowhere near yet no, and, and and that's something that we need to um, need to explore, and uh, and it, it's 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 all there are also issues around um, language and culture and society and other kinds of stuff. For example, in in case of New Zealand, for example, I can tell you the there are issues around the Maori consultation, uh -huh. and and their utilization of the uh, health services using this medium is statistically far lower than what you would expect for uh, the whites and um, other groups. So all of these things will need to be uh, to be considered because it's, it's not agnostic of socioeconomic situations and constructs that also pertain to the epidemiology and disease uh, processes for which such consultations are sought. So this is, this is quite a complex uh, landscape that we are traversing. I mean, there's one set of things to say that well, the technology is sorted, and we know that there are other things. But it's it's another kettle of fish when you bring people up to there and 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 build those interactions that you were saying, other. Mm. And um, and as you said, I mean, we are nowhere near 
that that's that place but we should probably be striving to think and um build some scaffolds around that isn't it yeah yeah, I agree. yeah. i've sort of got a book coming out on related issues in september of that but oh it doesn't directly direct uh, mm -hmm. address the practical use of um, of technology by anyone. Uh, yeah, so so this this gives us a good direction in terms of what we can probably um, start thinking around and and do some work on this area to see we can how we can draw on yeah. the experiences of people um, from across the world because if you think of our group as such, uh, there's a fair bit of representation of almost all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got uh, North America, Australasia, Oceania, um, South America, um, this India subcontinent, the, the other parts of Asia. So it's a good idea that we could start putting together some of those thoughts and probably um, start thinking as to what, um, how that landscape look like. Um, because definitely there is a, there's a need for standardizations and um, ISO 13131 and um, you know the um, and, and 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 guideline formations are, are excellent, but feeding into those will be these sort of issues that need to be negotiated at some point, isn't it? Yeah, this, uh, this group is badged as an international medical informatics association. Mm -hmm. We could be well placed to take a little bit of a lead on developing um, vision and tools for the use of medical informatics, health informatics, call it what you will, mm. which is not driven, uh, a vision which is not driven by industry. Yes. Early, and that's not maybe not even driven by healthcare services. Mm. Just a thought. Mm. And that speaks to what Kendall you were saying uh, uh -huh. about emerging it from the user base. So it's, it, it needs to be more user driven. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you know, you, yeah. No, go ahead, please. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that was what, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was hearing you saying that, you know, that's, how does it emerge from people who are actually using it every day and you know how they're at that reception end and how people are delivering services because you know it's a it's a network of services by the doctors by uh, managers and by patients by even representatives of patients themselves i say how do we situate this technology and uh, say in places such as aged residential care facilities and what are the factors that we must need to consider there? Exactly. And I'll also add a dimension of uh, time because over time, as people's skills improve, yep. continue to change. Yep. And so that adaptation over time is as important as what we understand how people use it now. And so I think, you know, both of those dimensions give us the the, the longitudinal um, mm. suits to make sure that it gets adapted. Uh, technology yeah, the, for you. yeah, the maturity continue. I mean, I think it's uh, one of the things that is really interesting here is that how many of us were thrown into the deep end of the pool last year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Because many people who were not even prepared to use them, they had to be using them because you know that there was no other thing that they could do at that point. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. So, how would how do we? Um, my question is, how do we harmonize with what the group this morning discussed, uh, and how do we bring ourselves into that that stream mm. together? Mm. Uh, mm. I think I think that's 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 something that we need to probably. What we can do is, um, we could, um, I you know, I, I I type up the discussions that we have today. And then post it into the into our common um, 
um, you know, the, the, the hack pad. And then we can initiate a discussion within the group. And then uh, next time when we convene, uh, sooner the better, I suppose, and see how many of those group can meet here and how many of us, I mean, if, if, if we can find ourselves in, in a common setting, then we can discuss things that we have discussed here and we can have the ideas that they have discussed there. And while we're discussing this, I see that Shoshi Gogia is coming and joining us. So she can bring in some of the discussions in the morning to say what uh, what we're discussing there. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, someone yeah. joined. Yeah. Oh. Hi, hi, Dr. Gogia, how are you? Hello there. Still on mute. Hi. Hello. Yeah, we were just discussing. Um, could you tell us, fill us in on um, the discussions that you had in the morning? I saw that you were present at the morning meeting as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically, could... first of all, sorry. I mean, I woke up a little earlier, but somehow the confusion was caused by uh, Joe Jose Flores. He sent a note that it's in the seventh morning. You know, maybe he sent a wrong so. There's been some confusion. He sent an invitation for tomorrow. Uh, yes. I mean, yeah. I, I suddenly saw the meeting is on and then I joined it. Anyway, oh. so, uh, uh, what we did discuss and Sriram conducted it very well. Elaine was there and, uh, and you know, he listed out the topics that you had in your thing. Can you show that list again? And the voucher, yeah. Alan was, uh, Alan, you were there yesterday? No. No, so no, anyway, no voucher was, was middle of the night. No, uh, yeah. Um, can you can you see the screen sharing? I mean, I, I've I've put put up a screen sharing there. I, I can yeah, do yeah, that. I can again. see that. So, yeah, just go to the top because of all the. Just go to the top. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the top of the thing, the the listed uh, the suggestion was that uh, Alan and Wouter would. Uh, take charge of uh, doing the 13131 in which I just interjected the only th addition that we want is that somehow the branding opportunity that uh, uh, EMEA and especially the our working group should get from this should come out a little more pro prominently for all the work then we will contribute and uh, you know, Renato wanted to join that definitely uh, because he gave a suggestion that certification is a very good idea. So uh, and so that was the key activity that we're working on. And Craig uh, from uh, Canada had suggested that we should go in for international uh, this comparisons. And uh, initially, it was thought that standard is a good way of international comparison. But uh, me and Jay Ganesh insisted that it is much more than that. So that we in addition. So 13131, our participation is well taken. We will be doing all of that. And uh, Renato will be joining that even I can, I mean, I've been working with it anyway. But uh, we do want some uh, method that uh, our branding, because finally our own goals are to promote EMEA and promote our working group within EMEA, and that should also be fulfilled. So that was the thing. Omen was not there, Charles was not there to about his uh, thing. And some suggestions were made by Renato for some other activity, which is SAMD, which is uh, software as a medical device. And he was given charge of working on that also. Okay. That in, in uh, brief is all that. I'm sorry, I've just woken up. So you can look at my right. face and I'm on a holiday yeah. anyway. Yeah, great. Good I'll, morning. Yeah, good day. I'll, I'll just show you the place where I am. In. Where are you? See, I'm in the middle of a jungle. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, great. Do you want to see? Hmm. See behind me. Oh, nice. Forest in the Himalayas. Very oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. I, can, I can feel the fresh air. Yeah. <laughs> you can. So this is uh, Arin's old uh, place. This is near Darjeeling, Karsiyong. Oh, yeah. lovely. Beautiful. Excellent. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, it's a very nice place there. Um, well, so that's thank you very much for uh, filling in on the discussions this morning, which was kind of... Um, what we've been spending time today, isn't it, um, Alan Kendall, that um, discussing the same thing. And what we were discussing was that how we could um, take those things and um, 
build some sort of a, um, address the gap that exists at the moment between the standards and the practice and how we can do things from grounds up, adding value to that, um, to all of these. So that was the thing that we were discussing here today, isn't it? How do you, uh, yeah? Yeah, so one thing which we did suggest was that uh, we should look at implementation a little more keenly because that is the real gap that we should try to fulfill. And we yeah. do have a lot of practical experience between all of us at UK. And one more thing, sorry, which was pointed out in the end that, uh, see, this year, uh, we do not have a formal uh, medal for, so it's just a virtual meeting in which we have a few papers and some keynotes uh, and all. And this is basically because we are, you know, distributed across the globe and we have the timing problems and all that. But I did make a suggestion which was well accepted by Elaine that at least, you know, we make a five minute uh, video of the work we have done within the working group to, to you know, which can be put, put into the thing. So create a video journal of sorts of the working group activities. And that was well accepted by Elaine and a note on that will hopefully be coming across. So Excellent. since we have suggested, so we should be the prime model. So I think you take charge of that. You know? And just make sure who is, make a write up, make a sort of a script and let's choose someone who's got a pleasant voice and- uh, Good and uh, also presentable, mm -hmm. not me, of course. So, <laughs> so yeah. You know, uh, someone uh, like you or Magdala, I think, you know, yeah. I, I would also like to see the EMEA website um, exploited to, you know, better, better used and some links, some connections, some resources to many of the topic areas and documents that we're talking about made available through through that website. So uh, uh, in terms of developing this work, I think we need resources and references both for our own work and to publicize the um, work that Imi is do has done and hopes to do, and um, if if we if we're going to adopt a yeah, a ground up approach to developing um, uh, ideas and resources that are useful for consumers and practitioners. Uh, when technology is used in healthcare, then we've we, we just got to say, look, International Medical Informatics Association is interested in not just the technology, but how it is used, the human yeah. of technology. And this is the work we're doing. And we need to capture capture that ground because you know i don't think anyone else is particularly interested in industry isn't interested in it right healthcare organizations have some interest in it but that's not their prime focus um and consumer organizations yes are interested in it but uh they tend to be tend to work through health services, at least in Australia. So a health service will consult a, uh, a consumer organization about a particular health service. And that's it, really. Mm. Yes, oh, and I, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. It's just, uh, just going to uh, uh, add in uh, maybe to uh, uh, a couple of key points. I, I really like uh, the conversation that we're evolving. Uh, really, uh, it's about how can we as a group support the implementation of virtual care on the ground. Mm -hmm. In that sense, trying to figure out uh, from a consumer's point of view, both health providers as consumers mm -hmm. and health uh, uh, patients and caregivers as consumers, how can we support them to really uptake the use of virtual care? Because ISO, 
uh, one, two, three, one, two, one is great to actually, you know, provide some guidelines, organizational uh, directions of implementation. Yet on the grassroots, how do we also support different groups in trying to implement it into practice? And also how do consumers use it? I think, you know, that would be a really interesting focus for us to at least concentrate some of our work together to promote this, uh, you know, I, you call it implementation science, knowledge translation, scale up and spread, whatever it is. This is about actually putting uh, virtual care and telehealth into practice. Yes, and there's a lot of wisdom and experience within the group that we can bring on board to say that, look, you know, these are the things that are best practices that have been found useful. And from there, we can start a grounds up uh, set of documentation to say that, look, you know, this is it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, everyone has a, has got a skin in the game. Yeah. I mean, uh, so connecting the users, and as you were saying, Alan, the, uh, uh, that, you know, the user stories and the, the, um, the user centricity of this is quite, quite important for these, the system to work as such, now that we have got a system in place. Yeah. And forced to some extent, yeah. Um, gentlemen, I do apologize. I have another meeting uh, coming yeah. up right now, so I have to drop off. But I'd love to, you know, uh, it, it, uh, our next committee meeting, I'd love to try to participate and yeah. continue dialogue and figure out how I can uh, contribute to the bigger body of work that uh, we're all working on. Very, very that's, exciting. That's fantastic. Have a great day. I think yeah. we'll, uh, we'll have to uh, move, rush to another meeting, but I think we had a, we had a good meeting today. Yeah, definitely. And I'll type up the notes that we have had uh, on this meeting and share the video and stuff like that. That works. Can, can, can you add a point Just about put a note website. that it's not there tomorrow? Yeah, right. yeah, I'll, I'll send okay. a message. Yeah. Just okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I should do that. Um, just tell them that. Look, but you know, also, you know, we have regular meetings meet that let's make it a monthly affair or a. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was thinking of. You know, let's of... Have, you know, there are deadlines to be achieved. Mm -hmm. We have How about how about a weekly meeting? And we'll see who can yes. join, who who may not be able to join. But that's fine, because everything will be shared, and we'll see who can stay on no. as long. Yeah. Yeah. I would say both that you know. We just agree that this person is leading and ask him for reports. We can do it weekly okay. or whatever. But more okay. important is to, you know, just to co groups for the activities. You know. Okay. And and at the moment, we already have people who are who are on there. So, whoever is in. so for example, um, uh, you know, yeah. Alan, you are, you are leading the uh, group on the guidelines for telehealth services as C and, you know, along with Uta and you know, if Renato join, so you guys can give us an update on what you guys are thinking, what you're doing, yeah. and so on and so forth. So we could probably um, do something like that. I mean, uh, I know that we are at the risk of being a little bit too officious, but if we don't want to do that, we're just a bit more informal to say that, look, you know, this is what we're doing. How about that? Uh, Aaron, can you make a note that it'd be good to understand how we can actually develop use and develop the website. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's the other thing. I think um, it's probably a good idea to have a chat with Elaine on that because they are the ones that can provide us with the space and things like that, isn't it? I mean, we could, we could no, put you, together- You want to work on a website? Just a minute. Alan, what do you exactly want? Just tell me and uh, no, a, a resource I can give you better guidance because I've worked on uh, the EMEA space for a very long time. You know? okay. Right. Alan. What, what I'm thinking is both for public discussion and for um, uh, sharing our own work in EMEA, as EMEA, um, sharing resources between countries, we should try and do some of that on the EMEA website. Mm. Oh, how to? Oh, no, it's not a website. You're talking about a shared drive of sorts. Even this is a shared no, drive, no, so no, anybody no. can do that. No, I'm talking. I'm talking. No, look, no. I mean, just say, we're just say we're talking about standards. Then we can put a list of and links to international standards, and we can put lists of and links to 
national guidelines and standards as well. In okay, you mean just create a proper uh, resource? You're talking about a publicly available resource you're talking about? Yes. Yes, that's that's the idea basically. Just say that looking at no, this. So that, that should ideally be in the India. This thing and Elaine can definitely do it. No problem. Okay. So who's Sorry, the sir. who's the person to reach out to? Is that Elaine or Elaine? Elaine only. Elaine. Okay. I can I can uh, coordinate that. No problem. That's lovely. That's yeah. lovely. Okay. Well, then the entire everything is covered because we do have public contributions. We do have the brand. Branding because it's under EMEA brand, and within EMEA we have the working group branding also. You know? So that's what I was aiming for. That you know, whatever we do should be just a little recognized. It's, you know, we're not doing it for uh, mm -hmm. for any money or just a fame or anything. But a little bit of recognition always helps and makes it. Uh, so as was pointed out right at the start, that our aim is to be the best working group within EMEA for a uh, for at least three years because more than that, that is not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> but now, since already there's been one year gap in between, it can be three years again now. So. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll do that. We'll strive. For, always a good idea. Yeah. Uh, all, right. all right. Oh, well. Um, so, you guys enjoy the day. Thank you. I suppose. Um, yeah. So, I'm off to my next meeting. Think about some of the things that are being raised. Yeah. And hopefully soon we'll be able to get into something a bit more concrete. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea too. And maybe it's a good idea at this stage to start maybe a Google Docs or something where we can dump our ideas together and then see how we how we go from there. But Alan, also keep in mind that you will have to have some. Uh, uh, I mean, you will need to talk to the people within ISO also as to how much will they allow because you must remember that ISO charges for everything. Oh, so, we had that. We had that. That's it. Okay. Oh, so I don't do it. Yeah. I, I, I will think about how to get around that. Yes, it is an issue. It is. I would suggest that uh, you talk with Heather Green, you know, uh, okay. because she can assure, and also you will, of course, need to go to the secretary directly. Although Heather Green is not your working group chair. Who's your working group chair uh, within uh, ISO? Um, Yi, Japanese guy, but I can't pronounce his name. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't, don't worry. I can cover off the ISO end. In, the reason why I'm saying Heather is be, because Heather is also quite prominent in India, also. You know. Yeah. We, we, so she can. So we, we, people we, who are within India also, you know, can help coordinate this. This is going to be a, a real sort of a fence crossing. You know. <laughs> It's going yeah. to be a little tough, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, right. I, I, th I think we can get around it. We don't have to copy and paste ISO standards or sections of ISO standards in our work. Right. right. Well, that's great. Right. That's a, that's a great okay. Um, thing. Okay. That's fantastic. So, um, Bye. yeah, why don't we take a break now and then we'll uh, carry on the conversations. Uh, we'll see how, how, how best we can do that probably next week and so on. And so also, forth. Also, give a formal thanks to Jose because he jotted down the minutes in our long video. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely. All right. See you. Have a good day. Bye. Sure. Bye bye. bye.